Okay, this is part two of our watercolor. We're getting to the watercolor painting. But if you missed step one, you might go back and watch that video as well. We made homemade watercolor paint, which is finally ready to go after 24 plus hours of drying out. I want to show you if you have, you can't get out and you just have to use what you have laying around, how you could actually make watercolor paper from scratch. I know it looks like I got a lot of stuff on this table, but believe it or not, you don't need all of these things. I just want to take like every excuse off the table, quite literally. So these are different options. So let's go over what you could use to make homemade watercolor paper. First thing you're probably going to need is paper. I have just computer paper, just garbage computer paper um, that we could use and that will work perfect. Now the coveted, I shouldn't even show this, it's worth probably like a million dollars at this point, is toilet paper. Believe it or not, if you don't have a blender, because a blender is going to be one of the things we're going to need to make the pulp, right? Now, if you don't have a blender, believe it or not, this stuff, will you know, it's meant to do it, right? It literally dissolves almost in water, and you could rip it up, tear it up into a tiny, tiny little shreds, and that would actually work. However, you, <laughs> considering the situation we're in, you may want to ask for permission, even if you're an adult, before you go tearing up the coveted toilet paper. Next thing, uh, beyond the blender. So we've got paper, blender, we're gonna need water. So I've got a big pitcher of water. The next thing you're gonna need is some sort of frame. I have just an old picture frame. It's very old, actually it's destroyed, but that's perfect. Some sort of picture frame, it does not need to be this big. Actually, I would have preferred it be about half this size, but that's okay, so you can see it. So picture frame, next thing. Uh, this is old screen from like a screened in window or a porch. I had some extra and I kept it, which I'm glad I did because now I'm gonna use it. If you don't have this laying around, you could use an old cotton shirt. I've done it before. It's not easy sometimes uh, to get it off, but it, hey, don't worry about it. We could use it. Next, I have a staple gun. Now, if you don't have a staple gun at home, don't worry. You could use the ultimate most important art tool in the world, the duct tape. So if you have duct tape, that will work as well. Now, I know some of you are thinking, wait, Elmer's glue, what? I like putting a little bit of Elmer's glue in my paper pulp mixture just to make it that much more stronger. Last but not least, what you're going to need is some sort of container to put the liquid in and then we're going to lift it out. I have two containers. This one you might have, nine by 12 inch pan. Uh, pretty common. You could make this work. And I also have this big bad boy. This is just a, you know, storage container. I usually put clay, materials, all kinds of junk in here to store. I just pulled them out. I'm gonna use this because this is big and it's actually just gonna be easier for me when I go put that uh, frame in and pull it out. The rolling pin. You don't need this. I don't, I actually kind of like a little texture to my paper, but if you want your paper to be super smooth after we take it off the frame, you're gonna want a rolling pin. Now that I've gone through like far too many materials that you could use, let's finally make some homemade watercolor paper. First step, I'm gonna tear this paper into like little tiny, like one by one inch pieces would be best. So I'll do, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight sheets. I don't know, just enough to kind of fill it up a little bit. The other thing I didn't mention is dryer lint. Um, some people actually put dryer lint into here just a little bit um, to blend it in and you get this like, you know, these little fibers throughout. Or some people like putting food coloring in. So if you like, you know, if you want to make it a color, I kind of want it as close to white as possible. Um, I might add a little bit of this just for fun. Just because I am such a high roller, I'm going to put in a little toilet paper just because I'm feeling crazy. I know somebody at home is watching this with their mouth dropped to the ground, right? They're just like, ah, he's putting toilet paper in there, no! All right, so now I'm pouring in the water. I'm gonna start this on low, and again, I'm just trying to get it to a pulp state. You need to be careful, especially if you have a nice blender. You don't wanna burn your blender up doing this. If you're an art teacher at home, you know what I'm talking about, right? Like usually you have a blender that you only use for this purpose only because it will burn the motor up if you do it too much. So be careful. Okay, so what I'm gonna do next 
um, is let that soak for just a little bit. So while it's soaking and kind of absorbing even more of the water, even though I just pureed this thing to death, uh, I am now going to make the frame. For the frame, I'm just gonna lay this out and make it just a little bit larger than the frame itself. All right, so I'm ready. I finally got it, uh, the screen on there. I pulled it pretty tight. Um, it's, you know, I don't want any big bubbles in it. Otherwise, it's gonna be more difficult to get it off the, uh, the screen once we have the paper pulp on there. Next step, I'm just gonna kinda start blending this in with my hand. All right, next step, I'm gonna add, oh, like I said, I like adding a little bit of Elmer's glue into here. I find it just makes the paper really strong. I took the lid off, um, so I'm gonna add, I don't know, maybe a quarter of the container, or not quite half, so somewhere around there. So before I do this, I'm going to kind of agitate the water, get the paper pulp up to the you know the surface as best I can, and then I'm going to be coming in, uh, obviously with the screen up, right? I'm going to come in as close as I can to the edge, and then I'm going to slowly move across, kind of get it to the bottom, and slowly come up. Right, so I carefully pulled out the screen and this is going to be an awesome thick piece of watercolor paper. What I'm going to do, I'm actually going to let this drip dry for quite a while flat like this and then I'm actually just going to leave it here on the screen. I pulled my screen pretty tight. So what I'm going to do is just leave it on here overnight, let it dry and I'll carefully pull it off with my spatula. Okay, fast forward. It's been about two days. I've been letting this paper dry. It actually popped off really nice and easy, and I think it's because I made the paper so thick. I don't know if you can see this, and I'll shoot a close-up of it, but this paper is crazy thick. But that's okay, I like the texture. And I'm gonna cut it in half so I can get two different small canvases. If you've made your paper, you have got one of two steps completed. If you missed my first video on how to make homemade watercolor paints, go find that one. Now that we've got these two components together, literally with all homemade materials, we're ready to finally create a watercolor painting and that will be my next video, so be sure to tune in. I'm also creating a lot of other content, of course some more animated stuff, but it just takes me more time. One way that you can help me make more content is to go to my YouTube channel, just search Outrageous with Nate and subscribe. Of course, sharing would be awesome and if you'd like to leave a tip on Venmo, you can find me as well. Until next time, guys, make sure you keep creating and sharing with me using hashtag OutrageousNate on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. You can find me. I'll see you next time.